All right, welcome back, Nick Lenz's Comic Corner. Classic, classic, non-classic. This is episode number 201 and double shot number 135. Yes. Two Batman trades for you. First up, it's Arkham Manor. No, it's not a volume. And there's no subtitle for this one. This particular book contains the entire six issue ongoing series, Arkham Manor. Written by Gary Duggan, artwork by Sean Crystal. Um... I do own all like like as like some of the series I have here in trade uh, get here from trade from library. I do own all six issues of this plus the one shot that came after the series. Um, this is good. Basically, you have Batman. Well, you're probably thinking though, wait a minute, Arkham Manor. And isn't that Wayne Manor in the background? Yes, but because Ben's Batman Eternal. Which this takes place like not long. After, this was this, this series takes place right after Batman Eternal. I'd say not long afterward. Though the first half of the series takes place before Endgame, and the second half takes place during it. As a matter of fact, there's an issue that leads directly into uh, an issue of Batman where you see the Joker show up. Yeah, yeah, and it's revealed that longtime recurring character who's been a recurring character in. The Batman titles for about three years, two or three years at this point, uh, Dr. Eric Border is revealed to be the Joker. This series reveals that. And uh, let me show up the artwork for this series. Um, I don't have a problem with this this series. The series has beautiful artwork. Um, now, sad to note, this is the only title Gary Duggan wrote for DC Comics last year. As a matter of fact, this is the only time I think he wrote for DC Comics. Now, when people think of Gary Duggan, people think of series like Deadpool, and of course, his current run in Kenny Avengers. Basically, uh, the reason why the Arkham Manor is taking over the house, basically, uh, Gotham City enacted eminent domain on the house because, well, Bruce Wayne lost his fortune because of, well, Lincoln, well, because of the main villain of the series, which I will review when, whenever I get a chance to review Batman Journal. This particular series is kind of like a spinoff of, of, of Batman Turns, one of like few that spin off into Vince Batman Eternal. Now, basically, Batman goes. Now, they take away his house, but they, they, they put all the the items in his house in storage. Of course, Batman steals the back here with several layers of concrete. But they say that there's one item missing, uh, a portrait of the previous owners. That's because Bruce Wayne. That's because Batman has it. And apparently, it's revealed in the series that Batman is living in a apartment building. Yes, an apartment building, uh, with Alfred still being his butler, despite that he can't afford to pay him. Um, though they do kind of fix it later on, basically by his money and stuff like that. But um, basically, one particular good point about the series is the villains. They highly shine in this book. You have villains like. Uh, Scarecrow, who appears without his mask on, no fear gas. Uh, Mr. Freeze does prominence up in here. Victor Zaz. I mean, a lot of really well-known Batman villains do show in the book, except for like Penguin, Joker, stuff like that. I mean, a lot of, so, some of them. I mean, you got some of them here. Heck, there's a new villain called the Spider, who uh, appears in all pretty much the entire series, and he's the main. He, basically, the story for the series is called. Um, Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, let's see. A Home for the Criminally Insane. That's the name of the series. And the series opened up with uh, what happened in Batman Eternal. Basically, Arkham Asylum was destroyed. Yeah, the, it was destroyed by the Spectre. Yes, the Spectre. DC's biggest supernatural villain. Supernatural character, he's not a villain. Uh, and he destroys, Arkham, he destroys Arkham Asylum. So... They move the villains to Bruce Wayne's house, and uh, they 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 they, they take up the couple parts of W, turn it into an A, and it becomes a new home. And um, uh, Doctor, uh, basically Bruce Wayne's uh, his, his, his Batman's father's study uh, becomes Jeremy Arkham's office. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's a study; he can turn into an office he wants. I don't think he had necessarily a big problem with that, but. It's great the fact that uh, he did that. And now he goes undercover as Jack Shaw because there's been a series of murders happening at Arkham Manor. And Jack Shaw is not insane. He just sent there just to do undercover work. And 
He eventually does find the murderer. I mean, it's initially thought it'd be Victor Sass because of all the murders happening there. But it's a guy called the Spider. There's a good look. There's a panel, which there is a good uh, picture of him. Let's see if we can find him. I mean, there's some epiloguing I don't remember initially reading at the time. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, th there's a sketch work of the spider. Uh huh. I mean, this is what the guy looks like. I mean, this is what the guy, how, um, how the artist drew him. But, yeah. That, that mystery is wrapped up within the first half of the series. The other half deals with some some escape Archimites. Now, one particular character is connected to a character that, hap that who's happened to be the star of the Gotham Academy series. Sybil, uh, what's her name? Uh, let's see if I can find her name here. Um, let's see here. Okay, Silver, Sybil Silverlock. Yes, she does appear in this very series, and somehow she escapes. Now, as what happened to her, I don't know. The main character, one of the characters of of the series Gotham Academy, is related to this very char character. It's her daughter. Um, it's it's not Maps. It's I think it's Cindy Sybil. And Killer Croc himself shows up in town. He mentions her in this very... He doesn't mention this very series, but he does mention he's actually knowing her. But this series is just really good. And... If you want to read a series that's not... I mean, yes, you have to read Batman Turner to kind of, kind of read... To kind of understand the, the whole premise of this series. But the story itself is very solid. Um, and... Pretty much the first half of the story is wrapped up the first for first three issues, and then the last three issues just three standalone issues looking forward to the escape Archimites. And Mr. Freeze is basically kind of released due to uh, good behavior, and he's just shoveling snow. Yeah. And this is also the only time ever you see ever in the current continuity you see Mr. Freeze without his freeze suit. Which makes sense because it's cold outside, so he, he actually can take the cold if he can if he can take it, but yeah, great series. Highly recommend it. I get the series 9.5 out of 10. This series was awesome. It's too bad DC canceled after six issues. And then what's with it? This series has all since been canceled. This is Gotham by Midnight. This contains the first six issues of this very series. Now, this series is heavily focused on... Now, I should also know this is also spinning out of the events of Batman Eternal, though the series came out before the end of Batman Eternal. But it takes place afterwards. Now... Basically, if you read the end of the series, well, it was some setup for basically Batman working with this, with Jim Corrigan, but that never comes to question because Batwing does show up in the series, though. He returned the pages of Batgirl, and now he's Batgirl's boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, this series, uh, the storyline is called We Do Not Sleep, and the, the writing in here is done by Ray Fox, and the artwork is done by Ben Temple Smith. Independent fans will recognize the name because he also is known for doing the 30 Days of Night series. Well, all the series for that, those particular series. And this is a lot about the Precinct 13, uh, the Midnight Shift, all the characters on this cover, all the focus characters in the series. The Spectre himself does show up toward the very end, uh, like in the last couple of issues of this trade. And... Um, Batman shows up a couple times in the series, and yes, Chappy Batman himself does show up in the series as well. But let me show you some artwork by Ben Templesmith. It's 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 good artwork, and it fits this very series. Now I know for a fact that you change artists after this arc is over with, uh, post um, post conversions. But basically, the, this IA guy. Is trying to shut down the thing because, well, it's on the budget. And even though this was set by Commissioner Gordon before uh, the events of Batman Eternal. But you gotta love this banner. This banner is great. And 
Not much else to say. I mean, it's it's a great series. I don't wonder. I mean, also also know Swaller Swamp, an area associated with Solomon Grundy shows from the series as well. I mean, it's a great supernatural series. It's just too bad DC canceled. This is actually like the one of the, this is like the last one they canceled. I mean, the only one that's still being published is Constantine the Hellblazer. That's the only supernatural they're publishing. But despite that, I highly recommend the series too. I get this book a 9 out of 10. Alright, stay tuned for next episode, which should be episode 202. And I'll decide what I want to do for that episode, okay? Until then, see you there. Bye.